Roger McGill is here at Velocity New York 2018. And I'm here with Deepank Sharma, who is a senior member of the technical staff at Verizon. Welcome. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, Velocity, the topics at Velocity have changed a lot over the years. And now we're talking a lot about containers and Kubernetes. Um, what is the impact of these topics, containers and Kubernetes, especially on technology teams like the one that you're part of? So we, we, we say this, you know, every few years there is, there is something new that happens in the software uh, industry. Uh, you know, cloud was one such event which was a game changer. And, uh, you know, containers we feel is another such event which is going to be the game changer, which is a game changer already in the industry. And we at Verizon, you know, being, being a technology company, uh, we were pretty cognizant of the fact. Uh, you know, it, it, it do helps us, uh, you know, in, in, in lots of different aspects. Like one, one, of, one of the biggest problems being a large organization is that, you know, we have different teams who write their so softwares in different, different languages. And uh, containers helps us, you know, get rid of all those problems because now uh, all of us are just shipping containers over to production clusters. Uh, that is one advantage. And then uh, we, we, we say that, you know, we are at velocity. So it's very uh, prudent to just talk about velocity because it helps us improve our velocity to not even just push our code to production faster, but it, it also helps us in uh, you know, moving our on-prem applications to cloud faster because now if in case you know, there are even 10 different technology stacks, by the time you are containerizing them uh, and moving on to a common cluster, your CICD process just could be a cookie, uh, you know, plain cookie cutter model. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, how does it affect the entire DevOps process, having these tools? So you've kind of covered that some, but. Right, so, so, so you know, DevOps, we, we say it contains of, you know, development and operations. Uh, I mean, most of the large organizations, you know, uh, the developer's life cycle, like, you know, it, it ends once he finishes his coding. Uh, and, and then you have, you know, the operations team who takes care of, you know, taking your code into production and so on and so forth. But, but with, with containers and, you know, Kubernetes, it all becomes simplified because now the developers, they control their, their you know, uh, software as to what should run in a production cluster. And also they, they, they specify as to how it should run on production cluster. So your DevOps is kind of, uh, you know, comes into the development concern and it becomes easier for, for all the teams to manage because now if in case you just put a CI CD process in place, uh, you you just become a high performing team, mm -hmm. and this all sounds great, but there's challenges I know with all right. this. What do you think the best the main challenges are? Yeah, yeah. so uh, as I said, you know we are we are a large organization. Uh, we have you know FiOS, we have uh, you know Verizon Wireless, five uh, G is coming around, uh, so we have like many teams and we have thousands of developers. Um, so that makes it even more challenging because there are teams who are used to doing their business delivery on a day to day basis. Um, in, but 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 they, but you know to ask them to change something it it, it becomes a little difficult. Uh, let let's say you know if in case we talk talk about migrating to cloud, right? Uh, so if in case we try and say that you know to a .NET team that you know there is a Java team which migrated over to cloud, follow the same you know footsteps. It was difficult, and 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 same thing was was here with containers and Kubernetes because there were a bunch of different technologies that they have to learn uh, you know to to move over to Kubernetes cluster faster. Mm -hmm. So, so those were our challenges, and, and uh, I, I, I think we addressed most of them. And what do you think the learning curve is on that for a typical, like an experienced engineer? Uh, see, it's it, it's the open source world, and that's the beauty of it. That uh, you know, whatever problems you face, uh, at least ten other people f would have faced in front of you. So, so there are you just need to know where to look, and uh, you know, find out that solution, apply it, and test it. If in case e even then it doesn't work for you, there are there, there are teams. Uh, from different companies who are working together as a collective community to, to find solutions to those problems. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that open source is a big help in all this. Uh, any other role for open source? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so I think uh, you know, it, it, it is definitely at the cost of, uh, you know, at, at, at the heart of it. Uh, I mean, Kubernetes is, is one of the largest open source community uh, you know, in this world today. Uh, and, and uh, you know, all the developers, they are, they are working on resolving the issues that they face on a day-to-day -day basis, and they're all working collectively. Uh, the, one of the biggest, uh, you know, impact is definitely the cost factor, that, you know, a large organization, they are, they're, they're not tying themselves to an enterprise uh, license's cost and so on and so on. Uh, you know, by the time, you know, you have a Kubernetes cluster running on a public cloud, you can just start deploying your application. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, apart from that, uh, it, it also, uh, you know, uh, the, like, like, like the way we have used Kubernetes is that we have these non-prod clusters which are shared across multiple teams. So, so that is a big, a, a very 
a you know, huge cost advantage for us. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned public cloud. So how has the technology helped you, like kind of fast track and get this stuff going for migrations? Uh, right. So. You know, I think so. So containers and Kubernetes, and and and, and again, I, I might be uh, you know uh, touching down certain points that I said earlier. That since uh, you know it it helps us resolve all those inconsistencies that especially we have in our uh, in our large, large organization because like we I, I, I you know we we coined a term known as snowflakes model, like two snowflakes coming out of a cloud and they are never alike. So we go and talk to all the different teams and they do their DevOps process, CI/CD process in a very different way. Um, so so uh, I think you know, with, with all this in play, uh, it helped us overcome all those challenges to a large extent. Mm -hmm. Great, so these are newest technologies. What's your approach to training uh, in your organization to, you know, to leverage? Right, so, so we, we just followed uh, you know, uh, the best model in the world, which is open source model. Uh, we, we, we started, have, uh, you know, we, we built a stack overflow within Verizon. We built, you know, Google Hangouts. Uh, we we built, uh, you know, shared libraries, shared, uh, you know, applications which people could could just download, run them on a Kubernetes cluster, and know, uh, you know, get get the look and feel of of what a Kubernetes cluster or a deployment is. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 it's kind of the self learning. And and you know, uh, the best part is that we started this in within Verizon, and we call it an inner sourcing model because it is still, you know, within Verizon. Um, and developers are helping each other, and they are adopting this model at a pretty pretty rapid pace. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the migration is going pretty well at Verizon. How is the cost, and are you getting benefit from? Right. So uh, you know, first thing is the, the the virtual machines to containers itself. Uh, I mean, that comparison itself, like you know, makes your cost at least twenty percent cheaper. Because let's just talk about it. You know, we have five microservices written in five different languages, and if in case I have to deploy them into a production cluster, I need five different virtualization layers, even if it is on cloud. Right, but then if in case I'm talking about containers, those are just five processes running on a single machine. So, so that is a, a, one of the biggest cost advantage for us. Uh, second thing is you know the shared tenant model, where we can now have a single cluster being shared by multiple teams. So we are not you know installing clusters after after clusters. Kubernetes gives us namespaces, so we just carve out a small namespace, give it to a team, and they start developing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that is second, and third, and the most important is it is an open source tool, uh, right? I mean, whatever whatever issues you face, you have a large army of uh, the best developers in the world supporting that particular platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's we hear a lot with open source, the best right. developers in the world. So, one of the things with all this is, is notion of resiliency, and um, how does the architecture help with resiliency? Uh, and, and that's a pretty good question because uh, you know. Going to production faster, like moving to, pr to production faster is one aspect. But then uh, one of the biggest challenges that, that you know, teams have is their, their monitoring models are so different, their resiliency models are so different, uh, but, but with Kubernetes we can just have one. So we are working on, uh, you know, we are working with Google on, on, on uh, finalizing or, you know, or, or learning the new uh, terms which are the SREs, the site reliability uh, engineering. And we are defining, so we are moving away from the SLA models, like you know, which is the age-old model. Right. But we are going go, going towards the more SLO, which is the service level objectives, like you set your objectives and you gauge your performance. So, so we are moving towards that, uh, and and we we tend to you know build it in, in in a way that it becomes consistent for the entire organization. Great. Well, thanks for your time today. Thank you so much. <laughs>